We are looking back at the remarkable political career of one term Kentucky governor, Democrat John Y. Brown Jr. He died today at the age of 88. His unconventional star studded campaign got him elected in 1979. Former Louisville Mayor Jerry Abramson was part of that administration and today remembered two key decisions by former Governor Brown impacting Louisville. I mean, I was there in the office when UPS walked in and they said, you know, FedEx is up in the sky and we're down on the, on the streets in our trucks. We'd like to get up in the sky too. And we've chosen Louisville as a location and we're going to try it with maybe six, 700 employees. Previous governor, Julian Carroll, had started the Kentucky Center for the Arts. But in fact, John Y. stopped it and said, look, you guys have got to, you, this community, you've got to raise some money to have an endowment to maintain and ensure that it continues. With his new wife, former Miss America and CBS sportscaster Phyllis George by his side, they swept into Frankfurt and WHAS 11 News covered every step of this glamorous four years for the bluegrass. The next governor of the Commonwealth of Kentucky, John Lyberg. He was Kentucky's first superstar governor, the 1979 election of Lexington native and Democrat John Y. Brown Jr. had the nation talking about Kentucky. I do not believe that bigger government means better government. Swept into office with the help of an active TV star, his new wife, Phyllis George, a trailblazer herself. The first woman to appear on CBS's The NFL Today. Denver has surprised everyone this year. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not my time, it's my husband's. Please welcome Mr. John Y. Brown, Jr. Brown's campaign was unconventional, holding his own statewide TV forum to press his case to the voters. All the politicians know how to do is to take care of other politicians. The government belongs to you, not to them. It has in here a little place for the family record. <clears throat> his inaugural church service in Louisville drew stars, including the colonel. So help you God. And the inaugural ball was as lavish as the state had ever seen. WHAS-TV political reporter Jeffrey Hutter at the time covered Brown from start to finish. Brown's candidacy was conceived on a honeymoon in the Caribbean. It was announced by a Hollywood gossip columnist. But Brown already had a national reputation as a top businessman after buying Kentucky Fried Chicken from Colonel Harlan Sanders in 1964 for $2 million. He's different. Anybody wears a white suit and whiskers and a bow tie is a little bit different, but he had the imagination to do it. When Brown sold it one year later for $284 million, the company that bought it moved it to Nashville, Tennessee. The Colonel was furious until Brown got them to move it back. I felt it was a terrible thing to do. Because I'd built Kentucky Fried Chicken. During his term as governor, Brown capitalized on the star power of Phyllis, putting her in charge of getting Hollywood companies to film movies here. We have, I think, more beauty and, and, and more settings for movies than any state I know of. You know, with our mountains, our bluegrass, our waterways. It's a matter of promotion. His Midas touch as a businessman was hit and miss. He backed several failed restaurant concepts and unloaded the Boston Celtics before running for governor in 1979. Well, it just wasn't a fit for me. Once I did all I could do KFC, mm -hmm. it was time to move on. He and Phyllis divorced in 1998, but their chemistry was on display during this live WHAS-TV special for the premiere of Coal Miner's Daughter when Phyllis was pregnant. We, uh, we have picked out a couple of names. I don't know if we're telling yet, are we? Oh, for sure. Well, are we? Oh, yeah. Sure. Are we really? <laughs> in 2018, Brown was in Louisville being honored for his work as governor. It's a special day to celebrate. Uh, the human rights of Kentucky and equal opportunity, and I'm proud to be a part and be recognized as part of it. They were a glamorous, important couple who made people sit up and pay attention to government. I don't regret any of my decisions, uh, and I've had an adventurous life and a productive life, I think. And pretty sharp dancers at that. Well, Kentucky Governor Andy Beshear announced today that the former governor will lie in state in the rotunda of the Kentucky State Capitol in Frankfort, with additional arrangements still to be announced. In a statement, Brown's family said today that he not only dreamed the impossible dream, he lived it until the very end, adding they find comfort in what he wrote in one of his final days, quote, I have never been so happy. John Y. Brown Jr. died in his hometown of Lexington, always a Kentuckian, true to heart.